As the commissioner approaches the uh, bench here, we're back on the clock once again. It's a new day. It's a new pick. Got 107 for Don't Be Last, maybe the worst name in the uh, <laughs> entire league. Not well, the best name. That's you got for sure. the. Uh, you didn't come in last, so that's good. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, middle of the pack or last. Who knows? True. Depends how next year goes, I guess. True. That is Big Co's team. Jay Wayne, you're up for uh, pick one seven here. All right. Who you got? I'm going to go with uh, decent. Revelry Brewing Company. Oh, a little Lefty Lucy? Yeah. Left Coast IPA? You know, we sound like the West Coast, but it's the best coast. We're on the East Coast, which... Probably the best coast. It's a decent coast. <laughs> yeah. Any coast is a good coast. I, I mean, I like my Eastern Standard Time, but the fact that it says Standard tells you a lot. But the West Side with the sunsets... It does. It can does. We, can we just change? The, can we get Jared Goff in here and figure <laughs> out? Can, and can can we get the sun coming up over here? I mean, we're going down over here. We're still getting decent sunsets over here. Oh, you got to go Gulf side of Florida to get that. <laughs> because right. big on the sunset. Love a good sunset. It's my favorite. It's, you got a body of water and being able to look west on a clear view, you're pretty much good. <laughs> That's right. You South know? Southwest back porch is where it's at. <laughs> All right. Well, back 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 to this draft. Sorry about that. All right, Jay. Had to get what a crack in. So I'm I'm gonna go T.J. Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Whoop whoop. Big Co's got a pretty decent team. Mm. Could J- be a lot better. Made the playoffs. Took a blow with Tyreek Hill. Why not McCole Hardman here with with uh, uh, Tyreek Hill on the bench here? I mean, I think we'll probably have to save that discussion for a little later. All right. I know. I'm I'm sure if Big Co had this pick, he'd probably take McCole. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, you you'll probably have a chance at. McColl in the actual draft at one seven here. Are you going to take him? Hard not to. Yeah, hard not to. What? But what I've noticed, I did. We did have. We just went through the weekend of the FFPC rookie drafts, which was a lot of fun. And other than the one, there was two drafts where I saw him go one five. I was one of them. And then there was a couple drafts where he was like one ten, one twelve, two one. I was one of the one twelves. Mm-hmm. So I might be able to get another player here and then trade back get my second rounder moved I, up i've also seen some where he goes in you know the one four well I, like i know, said i took him one depends five depends on who's i in took there, him one five yeah so, so you i ain't afraid right, jay wayne hawkinson why 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 the hawk well looking at at big co's team he's he's got some tight ends and this is tight end premium and uh he's got mark andrews trey burton david and joku so I, I like that squad and blake jarwin but those guys are all pretty young and and unproven in a way i think i think david and is probably gonna be just fine this year but he'll probably have up and ups and downs there's a lot of mouths to feed there so why not just throw another top end talent best player on the board in my opinion i guess here uh onto his squad gotta like the mark andrews outlook for the season especially with lamar but yeah i i, I feel you uh i just so he's out of iowa obviously the boys are pumping out tight ends mm-hmm. in iowa uh obviously they had they had kittle couple years ago before that they had cj fedorowitz who was coming on strong but i think had to exit the league due to con- concussions and then years back they they had they were put out dallas clark oh sure, sure. never wore gloves uh, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously i'm sure everyone knows about these tight ends and that they're really good it obviously was drafted eighth overall uh 87 spark score the hands are pretty solid only dropped one pass out of 51 catchable balls in 2018. Uh, it's a 76% catch rate. He's just really dependable and safe, in my opinion. I, I understand we'll probably have a discussion of, of Noah Fant versus Hawkinson. And, and I sat on the clock here, and I, I've struggled with which one of those guys I like the best because they both have pros and not too many cons. But I just feel like Hawkinson is, is probably a little safer. Uh, Long term, maybe? I, I don't know. I just... I'll go with the guy that's got the sure hands, I guess, is basically what it came down to for me. Um, 35 of his 49 catches went for first downs or touchdowns. I think he's got a really good release off the line of scrimmage. I think he's a good route runner. He's got quick feet to go with a nice jab step. He makes good cuts and gets in in and out of his breaks very well. He's also kind of like Nikhil Harry in a sense that he uses his body really well to shield defenders and, and shield them off, create good little little bit of separation there in tight quarters, but he does gain separation as well. I mean, he's just, he's, he's pretty athletic. 
Uh, he's got a nice little subtle push off at the top of a route to, to also get some more late separation. The yak is pretty solid. Uh, it's not always the best, but I mean, he's also got the ability to miss several guys miss and turn a, a short gain into a really long one. He averaged 7.3 yards after the catch, so that's pretty strong. He can he can hurdle you. And then obviously the big thing here is is his blocking, and I know that doesn't help help you in fantasy. But he gets a ridiculous amount of credit for his blocking. If you read about him, he's like the best blocker that ever lived. Uh, elite, dominant, A plus, soul snatching. These are just adjectives I've read that described his blocking, and I think it's really good. I mean, I can't really argue too much. It's definitely not perfect. Sometimes he gets ahead of himself, comes in a little too hot, and will whiff on a block or two and, and, and go right past the guy, but then he's also pancaking dudes into the ground, really good at getting inside and outside leverage. I mean, he's just he's going to be able, I think, to get on the field, and I think that's going to help uh, You know, the amount of snaps that he played in college. I think he's going to get a fair amount of snaps – the Lions obviously spent a huge pick on him. Daryl Bevel, he's a, they're not sure how what kind of scheme he's going to run. He's in, in the past, he's basically shape shifted his offense to meet the the. Is that Mike hot? <laughs> Something just ripped. <laughs> Is that Mike hot over there? <laughs> check check. We might need to take a short bathroom break. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna pair of shorts. <laughs> Looking for Ray Finkel. <laughs> Ray ain't coming home. Jeez. So, anyways, I'm intrigued with Daryl Bevel. I know there hasn't been the greatest history of tight ends with Matt Stafford, and people want to point to that. But, I mean, he had Brandon Pettigrew for six years. He did finish with one top ten finish, but that's it. But, I mean, it's come on, it's Brandon Pettigrew. And then he had Ebron there for several years, uh, I think. Let's see here. But, I mean, he missed, he missed games and was injured in every year that he was there, except for 17 when he finished as a tight end 15 overall, which – he had ups and downs. I mean, looking at that game log, there were some really good games and there were some bad ones. And I just, I don't know. I, I can't. It's hard for me to make an excuse of why Ebron wasn't really good with, with Matt Stafford, but he, he was with Andrew Luck. I mean, I mean, I guess I can because Andrew Luck didn't have a lot of options there. All of his guys got hurt. He was basically throwing a T.Y. Hilton on a bum ankle. And Ebron was there to just catch every touchdown available. And that offense was really good. Yeah, and and, and, and really it's low. more of a, it's a, it's a number one, Andrew Luck is like the tight end position and number two um it's a it's a system like they like they put out two tight ends out there they like to frank wright comes from a tight end kind of centric area and you know so it's an easy fit for ebron to go over there and give andrew luck a good target and, and a good scheme to get you know get ebron the ball maybe that jim bob's uh scheme wasn't so much scheme towards the tight end they tried to get a, a big mismatch there but maybe it just they didn't fit together and they maybe they weren't working in the scheme and you know who, who who really knows but that's kind of the reason why I think Ebron's doing well yeah obviously there was a lot of injury there it's T.Y. Yeah. Hilton and Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant and then Doyle gets hurt um, but you know it's it's a, it's a system that's a system fit right there and yeah. uh, so so I can't make like a I can't make a system argument for Hawkinson here but I do think that Daryl Bevel is good at getting the best out of his players and he's a quarterback whisperer. I mean, he was Aaron Rodgers' quarterback coach when he was a rookie. He, he led Brett Favre and the Vikings to the NFC Championship. He was part of drafting and grooming Russell Wilson with Seattle, and they went to two Super Bowls. Obviously, he had that questionable play call where he, where he decided to pass it instead of run it at the end of the, the second Super Bowl. But, I mean, he's, he's done well, with the, and he's shaped his offense around the talent of the guys that he has. So I think I think there's a lot there's a lot of talent here, obviously with Hawkinson and Patricia saw what 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 a good blocking tight end can do, who can also receive and run good routes and right, which is something I think a lot of people don't realize is what Gronk was pretty much one of the best blocking tight ends in the league is something that he doesn't get. They just think he's right. a big nasty guy, but he's a filthy blocker, right? Uh, which you know definitely helped Hawkinson's case to to get on the the, the uh, Detroit Lions here, right? And be and, and I think he's going to do a lot for his team. Maybe not from a stand fantasy standpoint. We gotta we gotta hope that Stafford develops a relationship with him and trusts him, and that they call plays up for him. But he's gonna be out there helping the team. He's definitely gonna help carry on. And I think I don't think you can hold him back. And maybe yeah. it doesn't work out right away, and maybe you don't get the quickest initial value spike. But this is right. a longer term play, and it's a safe play in my opinion. And and he was the best best safest pick here to take. Yeah. Well, for one, 
obviously this is a new coaching staff 100 percent. they tried to keep jim bob in and it you know didn't work out which i, I didn't mind coming in i kind of like trying to keep a little continuity there but agree it just wasn't working out and they he knows patricia kind of knows what he wants and what he wants to see and th there's nothing to say that matthew stafford isn't the quarterback here in a year or two you know it could happen it doesn't happen often where you know teams let go of a guy who they may or may not view as a franchise court, but they're not his guys. So there is a chance that maybe Stafford goes somewhere else um, and they find a, a different quarterback, but now they're bringing in a whole new system. So it's just like for a while it was Jim Bob Cooter. It was, Hey, the, wait, we want to run the ball. We want to establish the run. Well, Patricia's coming in here and he really wants to establish the run and do what Patricia wants to do. And it's they excuse. They let Jim Bob go and they brought in a guy who wherever he's gone, he's had a really good track history of being in the top 10 of rushing year in year out. Now he has had AP good running backs. He had AP, AP and Marshawn Lynch. Um, but he still shows that he is willing to run the ball. And I've read several things about how Bevel and Patricia had multiple meetings and multiple sit downs about how they want to run the offense. And they want to know what Bevel's ideas was and how he wanted to do it. And this and that, um, I do, I, I, I always dislike Daryl Bevel cause I'm a Niners fan. I, I, I don't think he's not my favorite, uh, play caller. I don't think he's like super creative, but, um, he gets it done. I, I like the fit with him and Patricia and kind of what they want to do. And, uh, I mean, so, when Daryl Bevel was in Minnesota, um, there's a guy named Vizante Shanko. Little throwback Shanko. for you. Hadn't heard that name drop in a while. But in 2008, uh, in the Bevel offense, uh, they had Gus Farad as a quarterback. So Farodi, take that for what it is. Uh, but Shanko was the number eight PPR uh, tight end there, which was it was a pretty low PPR scoring year in general. Like the top two guys were good, but like every year. Um, well, it goes up and down, but like. It was mostly down. 174 <laughs> and 169 PPR points were, you know, that was the that was four and five. So he came in with 143 PPR points and was a number eight tight end. Which mm -hmm. you know, after those top couple of tight ends, even being up in the top ten, yeah, what does it really mean? Right. But I mean, what what's consistent throughout this with Jimmy Graham and with with uh, Shanko here? He had they they he ends they end up scoring some decent touchdowns from the tight end position. Uh, Shanko had seven touchdowns on 42 catches, which helped him propel up into that uh, tight end eight range in PPR. And then in 2009, he gets Brett Favre. Uh, so the old gunslingers in town, he has 79 targets, 56 catches and 11 touchdowns mm -hmm. where everyone was losing their mind by maybe the most fun tight end name ever, Vasante Shanko. Um, and he was tight end nine that year. So 178 points. So you can see the difference right. in tight end points from year to year. Um in, in that situation, he'd have been tight end four the year before. The year before, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously he had Jimmy Graham in those last couple of years over in uh, Seattle. In Seattle, he didn't really have too many notable ones from 2012 to 2014. Luke Wilson, Zach Miller, kind of combo platter, and you know they all they did okay. 58 targets, 38 catches, three touchdowns, nothing nothing great. Um, but then he did get Jimmy Graham and. Um, in 11 games his first year, he had 74 targets, 605 yards, two touchdowns. In the next year, uh, 95 touchdowns in 60, touchdowns? 95 That's uh, a lot. targets, 65 Whew. catches, almost 1,000 yards and six touchdowns. So not a terrible year for Jimmy Graham in the second year and over there. And then obviously he has a 2017 year where Jimmy Graham still sees a lot of targets, but the yards go way down. He's at says sees 95 targets, only has 520 yards, but he scores 10 touchdowns. So again, seems to be maybe scheming up a, deep, a big tight end for catching some touchdowns. So not out of the question that Hawkinson comes in here and gets some decent red zone looks sure. um, for in this new system. I think he'll be a better regular NFL player for the team than he is fantasy-wise uh, for a little bit. So it might take a minute before he's fantasy relevant. It's one of the longest developing positions out there. Right. Um, and you do have uh, Najoku on this team and Mark Andrews and Trey Burton who all could help you out. You got a little bit of time that you could hopefully develop some Hawkinson on, on this team. Well, unfortunately it's not best ball. So I do, right. I got to play the, uh, the guessing game on a week to week basis. But like you said, yeah, I, I, when I was putting this, this an auction startup, I, uh, was obviously all in on Trey Burton going to the bears last year. Still believe he could be great if they just throw him the damn ball. Um, and Joku was fun. I didn't have a Joku on any dynasty team going into that startup. So I wanted in Joku for, for just because he was just awesome. And, 
I agree. I think he's going to be just fine. He's still probably the youngest tight end in the league, even though he's been there for two years already. Um, I, th- I like him long term. You know, still solid. Hard Love to, it. Hard to figure out when to play plug that guy in, but like you said, Jay Wayne, it's a long term pick for a high value asset in Hawkinson. And I, you guys kind of went around pretty good there, so I'll keep my two cents to it to a minimum here. But Gronk and I'm Hawk Hawkinson and Gronk have been in the same sentence before, so this isn't new, but I'll not try to put them on the same same well, Yeah, you can't do that. The same, comps same are ridiculous. parallel. He's been comp to Gronk, Ertz, Kelsey, Witten, and O. J. Howard. Every well, tight end ever. Right. right. The best ever. Um he's obviously a Hall of Famer already. So I'll be careful the what I say with that. But when Gronk came along his first year, he was just a touchdown monster out of the gate. And he really wasn't big his volume wasn't there. He didn't get a lot of pass uh, targets, didn't get a lot of catches, but he, he had double-digit touchdowns as a rookie. And I'm not saying Hawk's going to do that, but Hawk's going to be on the field to have the option. If the Lions can get to the goal line or anywhere near the red zone, then he's going to at least be out there and have a chance as a big man we, that can catch to catch some touchdowns as a rookie. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he will. But he'll have the opportunity. The he will be on the field blocking, like you said, because his quality and that I think that's you know, like you said, the blocking itself isn't going to give you any fantasy points. But the fact that he's out there, down in and down out, as they they didn't draft him at number eight to develop his him over the next three years, as didn't try to figure out how to get him on the field. He's out there, snap one, week one, if he's not hurt, blocking and probably going to throw him the ball. Is they don't have as many playmakers as it used to, over the years. They've had playmakers in and out, obviously. The Ebron thing didn't work out early in his career. He showed flashes here and there. The majority of his career in Detroit, he had uh, Megatron overshadowing him, and we all know how much Stafford threw it to Megatron in triple coverage over anybody else. Um, and those, and in those same years, Ebron was super young and more and dealt drafted, with all kind of hurt, banged up, yeah, he was banged in, up in and out of the lineup for sure. But also drafted to be that vertical stretch move type tight end, but as that that type of thing was even getting popular at versus Hawk, who's going to be able to, yeah, block, but also be on the field at every play and give you an opportunity to get the ball thrown his way. The one thing I like about the coaching staff, and again, I'm not saying Hawkinson, if Hawkinson was, turns out to be 60% of Gronk, he's going to have a wonderful career. But the coaching staff led by Patricia, head coach, Saul Gronk day in, day out in New England for years and years as the defensive coordinator trying to scheme up something in practice to figure out how to stop him. If they ever saw anybody any close anywhere close to his ability and on Sundays that they were fake going against, you'd know that he had the best defensive scheme against a good, de- uh, a good tight end week in and week out because he saw Gronk every day in practice. Of course, you know, towards Gronk's later years, he probably didn't practice a whole lot because he didn't have to and he was banged up and they were trying to preserve his body. But the point being, Patricia's seen – a Hall of Fame tight end, day in, day out with the Patriots. So I do like the ability for Hawk and Patricia and that whole scheme and Daryl Bevel to come full circle and for the work. I hope I hope it works out for Hawk. I drafted him in some in FFPC this week, this past weekend, and I wouldn't put it past me to make this type of play for this team at one seven in this draft. So I like it. All right, yeah. And for those of you on YouTube, what we're doing here is taking a home league of ours, and we the three of us are divvying up all these teams and making picks for each other. The three of us obviously have a team in this league and we're making sure we don't pick for each other so i just picked there for big coast team and we're going to keep this thing moving right along let's get to 1-8 